UFC flyweight champion Henry Cejudo returns to action on June 8th at UFC 238, defending his belt for the second time since taking it off flyweight greatest of all time, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, via split decision back in August of 2018. Cejudo shocked the world with that win, and then shocked the world again by knocking out bantamweight champ TJ Dillashaw in just 32 seconds after TJ tried to move down and become double champ. Those two wins over top competition have cemented Cejudo as one of the greatest UFC champions, but combined it with his Olympic resume and he becomes one of the greatest athletes on earth. Cejudo won freestyle wrestling gold for the US at the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, becoming the youngest US wrestling gold medalist at 21 years of age. His win over Johnson made him the first Olympic gold medalist to ever win a UFC title, a feat made all the more impressive by the speed in which he accomplished the feat. It took him just five years from beginning his MMA training to earn a UFC title. Cejudo sits at the top of Olympians crossing over into the UFC on account of winning the top prize in both events. But there's been a long tradition of Olympic caliber talent fighting in the octagon. Before laying out the best, let's look at the first. When the UFC first kicked off, it was seen as a brutal freak show. But that didn't stop Christoph Leninger, a 1984, 1988, and 1992 U.S. Judo team alternate from signing up for UFC 3 in 1994 to become the first Olympics-related fighter ever. He'd have a hard go of it, losing to Ken Shamrock and then Guy Metzger in 1997, leaving him 0-2 in the UFC. Next end of the sport was 1984 U.S. Olympic freestyle wrestling alternate Dan Severn, who fared much better, making it into the finals of UFC 4, only to lose to Hoist Gracie. He would go on to win the UFC 5 tournament, Ultimate Ultimate 95, and become UFC Super Fight Champion. He also fought for the inaugural UFC heavyweight belt, losing to fellow Olympic veteran Mark Coleman in the first UFC battle between two Olympic athletes. Coleman fought at the 1992 Olympics on the UFC freestyle team, placing seventh. The next Olympian the UFC landed was a big step up. Mark Schultz was a wrestling superstar along with his brother Dave after they both won gold medals at the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. Mark would return for the 1988 Olympics in Seoul to place sixth. The first Olympic gold medalist to fight in the UFC arrived in a bit of a fluky way. He ended up being a late replacement opponent for Gary Goodrich at UFC 9 in 1996. Schultz would beat the tough Goodrich via cut 12 minutes into their fight and was paid $50,000 for his performance, but injuries aggravated by fighting forced him out of competition. The last of the Olympic UFC pioneers is Randy Couture, a 1988, 1992, and 1996 U.S. Olympic Greco-Roman team alternate. Couture kicked off his UFC career by winning a four-man heavyweight tournament at UFC 13 in 1997. He was the first multi-division champion in the UFC history and the only UFC fighter to do it repeatedly winning the UFC heavyweight belt three times and the light heavyweight belt twice. Making it onto the alternate team for three Olympics is no minor feat, but Couture never made it onto the mats, let alone earn any medals. That's why he doesn't make the cut when we talk about fighters with the biggest accomplishments in both the Olympics and the UFC. Again, Cejudo comes in first for holding gold in both. And then there's Ronda Rousey, who won a judo bronze medal at the 2008 Olympics in Beijing and went on to bring women's MMA to the UFC. She was the inaugural women's bantamweight champion and defended her belt six times. Her fighting career was a whirlwind of destruction, with only three of her wins taking longer than a minute. Then you have Yoel Romero, who won a silver medal in freestyle wrestling for Cuba at the Sydney 2000 Olympics. Despite being 42 years old, Romero is an absolute terror at the top of the UFC middleweight division and only missed out on tasting interim middleweight gold because he missed weight. 
one division down at the same Sydney Olympics. Matt Lindland won freestyle wrestling silver for the United States. Matt is notable for starting his MMA career three years before competing in the Olympics and then fighting for the UFC at UFC 29, just two months after winning his Olympic medal. Then there's Kevin Jackson, a man largely forgotten in MMA conversations, taking freestyle wrestling gold at the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. Jackson joins Henry Cejudo and Mark Schultz as the only Olympic gold medalist to ever fight in the UFC. He won the UFC 14 middleweight tournament in 1997, but ran into the buzzsaw known as Frank Shamrock when fighting for the light heavyweight title later that year. An epic war against Jerry Bolander a year later was considered fight of the year amongst many MMA outlets, but ended in an armbar loss for Jackson, ending his UFC career. But his Olympic credentials and contributions get him into our top five. There's loads of other notable Olympians in the UFC. Sarah McMahon won freestyle silver for Team USA at the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, and her fight against Ronda Rousey in 2014 marked the first and only time Olympic medalists have fought in the UFC. Dan Henderson represented the U.S. at the 1992 and 1996 Olympics, coming in 10th and 12th in the Greco wrestling competition. He'd win the UFC 17 middleweight tournament in 1998 and then become the first Pride Fighting Championship double champ in 2007. Ben Askren was on the U.S. freestyle wrestling team at the 2008 Beijing Olympics, coming in 7th. He's come out of retirement to make one final run in the UFC with his eyes squarely on the welterweight belt. Daniel Cormier came in 4th at the 2004 Athens Olympics, returning in 2008 as team captain for the U.S. freestyle wrestling team, only to drop out without competing due to a weight cut that landed him in the hospital. He's thoroughly erased that memory by going on to win both the UFC light heavyweight and heavyweight titles, becoming the second double champ in the promotion history after Conor McGregor and the only champ champ to defend both his belts. You may have noticed that all of these fighters come from wrestling and judo backgrounds. You'd have to go outside the UFC to find exceptions to that rule. Before Herschel Walker fought twice in Strike Force at the ripe age of 47, he went to the 1992 Winter Olympics as part of the U.S. bobsled team, placing 7th. Ray Mercer won boxing gold for America at the 1988 Games in Seoul and would go on to have some strange association with mixed martial arts. He'd lose to Kimbo Slice by guillotine in 2007, only to try the sport again two years later, defeating former UFC heavyweight champion Tim Sylvia by knockout just nine seconds into their fight. Last but not least, we've got Muhammad Ali, the original gangster of Olympians crossing over into mixed martial arts. He won a gold medal in boxing for the U.S. at the 1960 Rome Olympics and would head over to Japan at the height of his fame in 1976 for an MMA fight with legendary pro wrestler Antonio Inoki. Mm -hmm.